accept the minutes as written? A second? I was not here. Thank you. Are there any comments or corrections or anything else needed to change? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Anybody abstaining? It was me. Okay. I'm just so glad that our meetings are now recorded on video because when I lost my notes, I could go on YouTube <laughs> and rewatch. Oh did you have to do that? But I watched it at so one and a half yeah, like, speed. speed yeah. And yeah. And it all came back to you. Probably, yeah, I spent more watching. time searching for the file than actually mm -hmm. just redoing it, which is a lesson I've learned way too many times and probably should actually learn it for real. <laughs> <laughs> we do not have any public to comment. So let us move on to the meeting policy. Everyone get a chance to look mm -hmm. at the revised policy. Mm -hmm. I, uh, after sending it out, Lynn made some additional, not to the version that's been shared, but has other additional um, but what potential I thought, edits. But there were a lot of little bits and pieces <clears throat> that I saw that are not using consistent language and I would like to um, include a statement that says we are using the term meeting to refer to all activities, functions, events, whatever that are held in the room and does anyone remember if the section about liability was reviewed by anybody in town hall. I, I mean, it's got a bunch of legal easy language. I don't think so, but I think I think we probably cribbed that from another. We totally policy. cribbed that. Mm -hmm. Probably. Well, that's what I think. Anyway, we, yeah, we compared a bunch of different policies like that were oh, out there already. I'm I'm absolutely sure that's true. Uh, so just as a matter of, of how of the process for this, we, we <coughs> Susan and I and Sue Brown sat down and we kind of went through, I made like a kind of like a, a bunch of uh, sort of an outline or a list of things that to me were of concern that, you know, issues that were raised by the recent meetings that have been in here. Um, again, not because of the subject matter, but because of how large the meetings were, how, um, few sort of controls there really were on it um, and so and and in thinking about what it really means to have a hundred plus bodies in this mm -hmm. room um, and so I kind of quickly honed in on a few things that were important that I thought needed to be um, adjusted or defined and one of those was that I think we need to make a distinction between a meeting that has that is standing room only and a meeting that has seating involved because i think you know as in speaking with phil i mean i asked about that number like mm -hmm. how did we come up with that number and he said well based on the code you could have 300 something in there and i was like that's insane mm -hmm. yeah. just to think about and he said but and 250 may seem like a lot but we wanted to we wanted you to be able to have options mm -hmm. uh you know, if we wanted to do that. I don't see that as really a positive thing personally because I think really what we're looking to do is is more kind of control situations and not, uh, I just can't really see where we would want to like open up that can of worms and then set precedent. I think precedent. you meant for us, like give us the library options, Yeah, I know, but right? I, again, but yeah. it, having, having it, if we were to do that, you then set a precedent and someone says, well, but you had 250 people yeah. in there for such and such event. Yeah, and but if it was a to, library event, they would say, because it's under our own control. I know, but even so, yeah. it's still, it's still, yeah. you have, then have to argue with people, just like we've had to argue with people just about the sign itself. Yeah, and also uh, just, Blackboard. it seems like if the library was going to do a program that we thought was going to draw that many people, <laughs> we'd want to move it somewhere. Yeah, I mean, just the reality like, of being 250 people in here would be unpleasant. It would be, it would be nearly <laughs> if they impossible. were tiny people. Yeah. So I, yeah. 
so that was that was one conversation that we had. I mean, I, I spoke with the building inspector. The building inspector said two hundred and fifty. That must be wrong. Um, again, Bill <laughs> said this was based on math. So, uh, but I, uh, but the reality is, that it, the policy had already stated a limit of a hundred people, um, which. In thinking about it, I think that that is still a lot of people, but it's not unreasonable if you consider this room as standing room only. Mm -hmm. If you were to have an opening, mm -hmm. for instance, and there were no furniture involved, yeah. then sure, you could do that. Mm -hmm. uh, for anything, though, that involves, and, and people come and go in a situation like that. They stay for 15, 20 minutes, and their feet get tired, and they're like, well, see you, we're out. Mm -hmm. um, but anything that is set up to be over a certain time period, you just have to assume that it's going to involve seats because you can't like the folks that were in here for those two months um in a row they were doing meetings that were lasting like three plus hours and they had the room from 11 until two yeah so three three hours so they but so you could, i mean obviously chairs have to be involved no one's going to stand mm -hmm. for three hours and, and you know you couldn't you can only get um about 100 chairs in here for that and even then you're like blocked you, out. So you don't really have yeah. egress mm -hmm. Um, so I went back to the plan, the, to the actual schematic that Phil put together mm -hmm. and counted the seats and basically he had, if I remember correctly, he, he had, I think, eight rows of ten. It was either that or the reverse. But either way, I just said, well, okay, that's what was on the plan as a reasonable number of chairs. Yeah. So if we start there and just say that the maximum number of, you know, for a seating meeting is, seated meeting is 80, mm -hmm. um, and then you start looking at okay, what kind of a meeting is it? Well, for this meeting, for whatever reason, I need a table or I need two tables. So at that point, start subtracting rows that you can reasonably have yeah. in the room with the furniture. And so I just created the little chart there where you see it whittled down <clears throat> the more furniture that you have. Um, it's, it's a little bit arbitrary, but it, it, it seems, you know. And so you'll send reasonable. this out, once it's finalized, you'll send this out to people when they uh, book them. So for for a meeting like that where it's not you know something that's weekly or monthly, people where we are familiar with the parameters of the meeting, but if somebody cold calls us and says, you know, we're interested in having a meeting, we say, okay, um, we're going to send you the policy in the form. This will be all one. This will be one document. It, uh, and I don't have the uh, the application, which needs a little bit of tweaking as well. But I don't see that that really needs. I mean, maybe it needs to be approved, but it's not really a policy document, so I don't, I don't know if you. As long as it matches it. what. Yeah. Is in so it's here, but it's right? gonna. It, yeah. I mean, it basically will reflect yeah. what's in the policy yeah. that you're gonna tell us contact information for one person, the expected attendance, you know, AV needs, furnishing needs, so that we can then say yes, this we meets the this. policy. We have the equipment, um, and what you're planning to do is is realistic and reasonable for this space, uh, and meets the policy guideline. So. Um, and then, you know, because it's one document, they have to go through this, or at least yeah. past it, before they can sign the paper. Yeah. Um, what I would like to see, I mean, and especially once we move this to a website, is that in the way that if you log on to something, you have to check off the little box that says, I have read and, right. you know, every time Apple does an update, it's like, well, you're not going to read the whole freaking policy. But the thing is, we need to make sure that they acknowledge even if they don't do a thing by reading it that they are responsible for being aware of that information but just by signing you by signing the policy you've done that regardless i don't know when that's going to be a, oh a, a i know but i'm just saying yeah, that sure. the goal is yeah. eventually to be able to right um another consideration for this is and we probably talked about this at the previous meeting but because we're on a shared campus with other departments and Council on Aging is obviously another public and busy space, we need to be aware of their schedule and anything, I think, over a certain um, expected attendance. So I think, the, I can't remember what the number that I put on here was for that, and this might, the type of this is really tiny. Is it 45? So anything over 45, so basically like a little over a half, a half full attended meeting that's during COA hours, we need to notify them and just be like, is this okay with you? Um, so this is the part that I was really unclear on. Okay. So 
the, the policy is very unclear on this, um, must be approved in conjunction with the Council on Aging staff. So mm -hmm. why do we even have this in here? Because who is going to do that? So I'm coming with my group of 50 crazy middle-aged moms, and we're going to have a, <laughs> a thing with two tables. Um, and we want to meet Monday from 9 to 12, right? Mm -hmm. So do I have to call the Council on Aging and get the approval? No, this, we would, the library would. Okay. That, that it's pending the, the approval so that we so don't then you out. don't even need to put it in here because as part of the process <laughs> if they <laughs> fill out the application that's an administrative stuff it's an admin it's yeah. an administrative i guess stuff. but i think that they should know that this is a consideration because if we call them back and say well council and agent i mean sure we could tell them no you you can't do it but i mean yeah. i think it um i think it bears because stable. this by putting this in our thing you're essentially giving the council on aging on paper the right to veto mm -hmm. anything here. Mm -hmm. Over a certain, I'm saying that we, okay, maybe the language needs to be changed so that it's not, that it's not a joint decision, but I do think that we need to, you know, run it by them in the same and way. And that's that totally want, fine, that but I don't think it needs, I don't think it needs to be in our policy. Okay, all right, that's I mean, I, maybe other people disagree. I just feel like well, it's I'll, sending a, a different message than I think we want to convey. Well, and okay. I, I think it's also easy for me to imagine there being events at the Council on Aging that are outside of their regular hours that also would need the parking lot. So, for instance, on Saturday, there was a winter dance from the high school there. I don't know what the hell that impacted the parking lot. But anyway, that was outside of the normal hours at the Senior Center. Mm -hmm. There's also, like, other meetings that happen there, Election Day, et cetera. So, like, having that, their hours in here, like, that also feels like it, it takes away our ability to kind of coordinate with them or for their hours to change without our policy change like right and maybe too, too much, much information to the policy. Okay. yeah just i think i guess this, would, this is what i would would consider then something that needs to go into the internal like staff yeah process yeah. Well, like here's the checklist of like yeah. what you do when you get a reservation you got to check the hours when is it yes. is it because we want to avoid like a head-on collision collision and have yeah. and having them you know, well, is there a shared calendar between <coughs> the senior center and the library so that things can be cross-checked? Um, it's I personally, it would be easier to just pick up the phone and yeah. call them. I don't know because I don't know like what's well, is their calendar complete? Is it do they know about something that we don't know because it hasn't been announced? If someone is, but even just an internal calendar it didn't have not to a be. shared calendar. No, there's we don't. No there's internal any. shared. Calendar. No. Would you also coordinate with? one because like on no because we don't share a parking lot with them yeah they don't That's have a right to this parking lot they they don't they park but because they, they use the parking lot because it's a public parking lot um, and they are by whatever verbal agreement they only do that outside of operational hours but it's not like a formal agreement and they don't have a right to the to parking so it's you know that's not our problem necessarily yeah. Because uh, didn't they have like a, a vodka tasting last weekend? Did that impact? <laughs> if it happens on the weekend, that started I don't know. at yeah. two. Yeah. Right. I mean, it is very complicated because it's a shared parking lot, and we don't know who is using it for what. Mm -hmm. It's also like spillover for VFW, <laughs> yeah. right? So yeah. we we can't control all the parking. No. You're right that if they're having an event, even though they technically don't have the a right to the parking lot. Yeah, no one's out there here. policing and no, telling and them it, they can't until, park their until 20 Until it's things. just demonstrably an well, issue. Exactly. Like, There's yeah. something going on the 24 over there. Is or was? Is. is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but, again, it, But that doesn't have anything to do with the meeting room. But it could, it. because, I mean, to, to Maureen's point, is that there's a lot of, everyone's sharing the parking. So mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be impossible. Inevitably, no matter what we say, what we say our policy is, there's going to be some time that someone's going to get mad because of parking. But if we put it in our policy, it kind of makes us responsible for it. And the way the policy is you know, worded currently, you essentially are saying, if the Council on Aging it does not approve this, then you can't have the meeting room. So, anyway, I I, I don't disagree that it's good policy to say, hey, we've got a you know a group here. They want to bring well, in a so hundred people. So, but if if okay, but I mean, if, at the end of the day, um, if you and the fifty moms want to come in, yeah, 
And the council and agent says, absolutely not, because we're having the tuna fish luncheon yeah. that day, <laughs> yeah. and we're expecting a big crowd. Um, at that point, it's going to be down to my discretion to say, go ahead or not. Yeah. Um, and then at that point, it's sort of like, well, but there's also a third option. All. Sure, we just don't, we can't guarantee there's parking. There's just so you know, there's another event at yeah. the senior center that day. We cannot guarantee. And so I, you're saying I should not say. No, this I'm not. Is I'm, no, I'm saying there's the options. You're you're making it seem like there's only one option. I'm saying there mm -hmm. there are options. You can communicate. You can do nothing and just let the chips fall. You can call and coordinate, and then make a decision and tell them either yes or no. And the third option is you can say. Sure, but just to let you know, there's the tuna party at the senior center, so parking might be limited. Well, I, and, and there's plenty of parking in the surrounding correct. area. Correct. You know, like there's parking at the church. There's parking at the Hopkins. Over Russell. Russell. So, but if, so but if this event, if the, if the moms are meeting at 9 and the tuna party starts at 10, then the moms are going to take all the parking and the tuna party will then not be able to use the parking lot. I... I actually wonder if having much more sort of general language about, you know, parking lot capacity may be taken into consideration or something like that, like not promising the Council on Aging and their hours or other entities that yeah. might need to use the parking lot. But just to say that parking lot capacity may be an issue that can lead to a no. We're also assuming that everyone is using a car. I mean, how do you know that the 50 moms aren't all coming here by bus, right? I'm going well, here right, but that would be a factor moms. in the application. If you were to say, and by the way, we're all coming by bus. Well, then but who's going to sure. put that in there? Are you going to ask in the thing? Are you coming by bus or car? No, okay, but let me, let me just let me just um, make sure that I understand what you're saying. You're basically saying that parking should not be a criteria for accepting or not accepting. A yeah, reservation. that would be my keep it general. Yeah. My yeah. philosophy would be yes. Don't make parking uh, a, a consideration. Should you coordinate? Yes. If you know you're both expecting 100 people at exactly the same time, well, what's then to coordinate? How can you coordinate if you can't yeah. say no? Well, you call to say who gets well, priority. Like, there, there's no board, decision, board, but board. you could at least say to the folks. So, okay. I'm having uh, I think you're, you're getting too much into all the what ifs and trying to accommodate too much. I'm not trying to accommodate anything. I'm trying to do the opposite. I'm trying to say the chances of this blowing up in our face are pretty minimal. Let's not micromanage parking. Sure, it's, I think co the coordination is simply, if Patrick wants to call the council on aging and saying, hey, we've got a group booking in at 9 a.m. for 50 people, just to let you know. Like, I feel like. But then you run into the issue of, if you don't want to hear the answer, then don't ask the question. Yeah, well, that's know. true too. And <laughs> yeah. so, if you're gonna call council on aging and say, Hey, we got this big event coming, and they say, "Well, we do too." Nothing well, you can do well I did my part. No, I, you know, like yeah. Well, that's and then that's the can of worms thing. that you probably yeah. Don't want to open. I think just. I, I guess what I'm looking at is that the re there's a, the reality of. I hear what you're saying, and you can just say to the people that are organizing the meeting, you know, there's only a hundred spaces or whatever it is on yeah. the site, um, and something something else is going on at the same time. It might be a little tight. Um, the problem is that like with the people that were here, they hear what they want to hear. And it's sort of like just damn the torpedoes, mm -hmm. we got a room, hot diggity, and we're gonna have our meeting yeah. and whatever. But the reality is that we're trying to, we are trying to run a library and basically all of the people that come in to do ordinary library business, whatever that is, um, are then you know screaming at us that they can't even get through the lobby or they can't you know, get to the door. Problem. Okay, well they can't get to, they can't park their car. But that's they can't a different get to the problem. Library. You're you're making it about is there something happening in the counseling and aging? I, I'm saying that that would it is two different things. I mean this was just yeah. one event. Counseling aging wasn't even open. But I'm saying during the normal business hours, if someone says you know just just say that they're at the same time, not even like different yeah. times. They're just like two happen two happen to be at the same time. And it's going to be way too much. It's a crush. I think, just in terms of cooperation between departments, I think that we would probably should have said one one department or the other, whether it was just by the the you know that one was booked preceding the other. Like it, those should have that the second reservation should have been postponed or not 
you know, not take it. What did it, what, when did this happen? I'm saying if it did. Oh. Well, I, I mean, that's, that's, it seems that's a choice, but, but making it about the regular library patrons can't come in, that's different. If it really, if that's disruptive, then we should say during library hours, no more than this many people. Like, if that's the concern, because that's got a different solution. But you still can't manage but that. You just don't know how many people are really going to yes. show up. I think the whole yeah. parking issue just needs to get taken off. I think. Let them find their own parking. Yeah, yeah. whether you're here but for a meeting or whether they, you're here for library hours. But it's not just about the people using the meeting room. Mm -hmm. Because when I was here that Saturday, when the room was oversubscribed, the patrons, one of them called the desk and said, what's going on? I can't find a parking place. Mm -hmm. And it's not as though there were even handicapped spaces available, except a couple down next to the senior center. I saw one family come, and the dad dropped off the mom and the two children. He walked in like 15 minutes later after he went and found a parking place someone else. My concern from having seen that is that, to my way of thinking, our patrons take priority. And if there is something going on that prevents them from using the facility that they probably paid for, or But these may be patrons, too. These are also potentially yeah, people who pay. You still can't policing the parking. Yeah, I mean, there, what if it is every, uh, you know, the, the, all the elementary school from first to third grade are all meeting here. They're all taxpaying families. They're all patrons. They're here having their meeting. So what's to say that I can't have my parking here in my meeting because the regular person who comes in every Saturday morning to get their books can't find, like. So let's, can we reframe this? Is, so the cars, yeah, as you're saying, someone in, an alternate universe might charter a bus, but that is very rarely going to happen. So I guess what I'm saying is that during normal business hours, can we just limit the number of people that can have a meeting? Yes, so that it could. doesn't you disrupt could. the entire, I mean, same, same difference. Because again, if you limit it down to like, okay, well you can never have more than 45 yeah. people at a meeting during normal hours, that it, uh, essentially achieves the same thing. Because you know, if everyone, selfishly drives their own car, then that's a maximum of 45 cars. Yeah. If they carpool, then it's less. Perhaps that solves the problem. I mean, that would solve all of the problems that you're describing. Do I think it's the right thing to do? No, but that's my personal opinion. What What is not the right thing to do? To, to limit it. <clears throat> I mean, I mean it has I, to be a community space. I'm 100% behind limiting it so that people can actually fit in. Like, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just saying limit it just so we can make sure we don't have a, a parking problem. Uh, I'm not in, I'm not, I'm not for that, but I would rather have that mm -hmm. than have all this checking with everyone, who gets the room first. Yeah, you can't maintain that. That is not feasible to maintain. It's not feasible and to And I would imagine it would be difficult and worrying about the desk. parking numbers and who, where else are they going to park? Like you can't. I'm afraid that if if this is, uh, you know, that this situation then becomes it, it becomes not foreseeable but possible that the main driver of activity at the library is the free meeting room in which you can put a hundred people without restriction mm -hmm. Monday through Friday, you know, 35 hours a week. Like and the pizza that, eating middle schoolers at the basement of Jones. Remember the pizza throwing wild, crazy middle schoolers in the meeting room down? Well, I'm just saying. Room? I mean, there's enough people that are looking for meeting space all the time, and if there's no if there's no room in the policy for there to be discretion to say mm -hmm. that's not really a really great time for like a meeting that's potentially going to have 100 people. I didn't say that. I just oh. said that you, why limit it in the policy? It's perfectly within your discretion to say if you know as the library director, that Luna also happens to be having her very popular children's group or super craft thing or whatever, Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, and a group calls and says, I want 100 people, just say, it's, it's not 
you know, you can't, no, well, it's not okay, available that, that it's not available. 100 people. But that, are you saying like if she were doing that meeting in this, that activity? No, mm -hmm. even if no, it no. wasn't, if, if you expected 30 families to show up for the preschool room, mm -hmm. you already knew that was happening mm -hmm. because you're the library director, you know this. So you know that it's not gonna be a good experience for anyone if you've got 100 people here and 30 people there, potentially at a time that V1 is also having a okay. tasting. So it sounds like you're just saying, don't make any of this explicit in the policy, just say no. Uh, that would be yes. my opinion. Okay. Just as long as no, there's a line about discretion yourself. of the director. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. it has to be. Like, the, the it always has to be up to discretion. Mm -hmm. Or if, like, another example would be if you know you're going to be short staffed. Mm -hmm. Then, then you sure. have the right to say no sure. to a giant thing because you don't have the staff. Right. Well, I mean, arguably, I could say that we never have staff <laughs> well, for that. So that's a different yes. question. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I guess what I was trying to do with this is to make as much of this explicit so that it's in the policy, so that I point to the policy rather than simply saying it's at my discretion. Mm -hmm. That leads to a lot of conflict because someone is saying, I don't trust your judgment. You shouldn't have your job. I mean, this is what happens. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so then, what? So then, in your opinion? But I mean, I can what, I can put up with I can put up with that if the if the trustees support that approach, uh, and then when the complaint comes, they say no, that's the way we wanted it to happen, and it's not going to just get relitigated with. The, do, you know, do you see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I see what you're saying. So I mean, if so, if we took. Okay, now now we have a new objection. Is it's a lot of extra stress for you? So great. So what? what it's not. Potentially... It's not stress. It's just. It's simply that's what's going to happen. So it's just a matter of you either are explicit or you. You know, someone says, "Well, where is that written? Where is that written?" And it just becomes like a conflict. It's. I mean, it's I no more stressful it, than it someone complaining written. about the written policy. Well, oh, it's okay. at your well, discretion. But again, yeah. the questioning why you know but like why is it not 250 you know so i'm wondering if, if a statement about about the director's discretion and it could say something like for reasons of parking capacity staffing levels library programming or other um you know or other concerns or something yeah. like giving some sense of what some of those I'll things might do, of what we anticipate common reasons that you would say no might yeah. be. So you do have something to point to. Because yeah. I agree that being able to say like, listen, it's a parking crunch. They've got a huge mm -hmm. thing going on over there. We just can't do it at that time. This is something that we consider and it was in our policy. Yeah. But you don't have to get into super specifics about like this Numbers. is the exact threshold mm -hmm. and the exact hours and so on. So if you get so if there, like if there's maybe like a couple categories that you think are likely reasons you'd say no, put those down and then make sure there's a like or other reasons. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. That's fine. Right. For well, example, we can, but not limited to. Right. We can take that approach. That's that's fine. Um, oh, that sounds good. Yeah. Thank you, Jess. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. Um, is there anything else about this that really? I, I feel like that gives you more leeway to say no. Yeah. Yeah, it does. I I mean I understood where Patrick was coming from to begin with, but I think this is a much better solution. So I think it's helpful to have some transparency of like why someone might say no. Right. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to lock yourself in mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. And make it so narrow. Yeah. Yeah, or legalistic. Like, like, well, we don't we only expect to have forty four people. So you can't yeah, yeah. Full, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Right, exactly. Like how many showed up on Saturday for the preschool? Do you know? The friends of the preschool? I don't know how many people were here. Um, I doubt it was a huge number, but it, it was, you know, I, it wasn't like the, I don't think it was like any kind of like an overflow crowd. Um, but that was probably huge. As far as, I, I mean, I didn't hear of any disruption yeah. related to it, so it was. So, I mean, I, know, I don't want to shut it. I want people to use the media. Yeah. Don't get yeah. me wrong. I want people to use the well, media. Well, I mean, I don't, it's one there, of but there's, a few. It's what? This this room is one of just a few that are available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it should be. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had to, you know, I had this conversation um, to to a degree with other uh, folks in town hall, and the town administrator, who, you know, I, I've described what were kind of the added work of this room and, and sort of like the fact that we're reviewing the policy to make it more manageable. Um, and she kind of thinks that should be, we should do even less. 
um, that we shouldn't be running like a you know uh, an event facility or or you know what it, as she describes it, um, which. I, I mean, I sort of disagree. I, I want it to be as open as possible, but I also know that there's a reality of operating a library with only, I mean, on a Saturday, mm -hmm. there's two people here. Yeah, exactly. Neither of whom is me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm, re I'm relying on them mm -hmm. to have to manage a situation that can seem stressful and, and be yeah. potentially unmanageable. I mean, I've had to, I had to tell them, like, man, if it gets crazy, just call 911. Yeah. I don't yeah. like going away and saying to the staff, no, yeah. worst case, call 911. Yeah. That yeah. sucks. Right. Yeah. So. I mean, but that alone is well, reason well, enough to say, a, we, can't, a we can't manage a crowd of 100 on Saturday mornings. There you go. But it, it, yeah, but again, it's just me saying, man, Saturday's not good for us. You know, I think that's totally yeah. fine. Yeah. No? Okay. Yeah, because yeah, it comes under the discretion yeah. of the library director to yep. say, we're not going to do programming of oh, that magnitude. It conflicts with library programming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It conflicts with staffing issues. It conflicts yeah. with it's up to your discretion. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I mean, even if it were the case that who happened to be working the desk on Saturday, I know it's usually the same people, but if you had more confidence in certain people as opposed to other staff members, that might even give you some leeway to go one way or another in making a decision. That we had to have subs, you know. And I have. I mean, I have as much. I have full confidence in all the staff. I just think, again, I think it's unfair to the staff mm -hmm. um, is what it comes down to. Because I mean, again, it's it's a challenge. I mean, we need to maintain a work, you know, working conditions where people want to come yeah. to work. And if it becomes like stressful and they're like, I'm getting paid fifteen dollars an yeah. hour, mm -hmm. I'm going. This is more yeah. stress yeah. than it's oh, worth. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. There, right. There are many factors for people to say that, yeah. um, and we don't. Town doesn't really do a fantastic job of like rewarding people for their hard work anyway. So it's kind of like it's a, going to be a fairly predictable result that people are just going to say, "This sucks. I'm leaving." Yeah. You know. Um, so yeah, I want to avoid that, and so yeah, I mean, we'll just we'll have to look at it on a case by case basis and say, you know, but I, it, yeah, I mean, a lot of these conversations are going to be down to, I mean, the, the last time uh, that that the big group that met here met, they called on the phone beforehand and and you know explained the situation. I said, you know, you actually helpfully caused us to review the policy because. <laughs> You know, this yeah. is, it's too much for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the guy was Did like... Did they get that? Huh? Did they get it? Well, it, it's not that they get it or don't get it. It's just, again, they're, they're trying to, they're, you know, they're trying to just get more and more and more. They're trying to, you know, get as much as they can. The well, guy what was were like, they well, asking could, for it the second we? time? Well, he, when I said, well, nothing. I said, 100 is 100. That's what's in the policy yeah. now, and that's what we're sticking with. Yeah. Um, and he said, well, but if we had more than 100, could we... Uh, have like an overflow room? Could we put them in the conference room and have them like zoom in? And I was like, no. <laughs> so this was like an yeah. instance where like I used discretion to just say like, yeah. no, you can't do that. You know, because you're already but it sort sounds of like taking over the building. They're also they're setting the base on where they can jump off to. Yeah. So if they have like if they invited a hundred. Well, you know, maybe they'll be kind of loosey goosey on the right. Who's counting? You know, yeah, and it, yeah, and exactly. it's like it's like negotiating. Certain people, many people, are very reasonable and are rule oriented. There are other people that are yes. sort of like negotiating with a toddler, yep. mm -hmm. and you know, it's just like they're gonna like. But what about? But what about? What? Mm -hmm. And and it's just it's more like a negotiation with a teenager. Or a teenager. <laughs> exactly. Either way, <laughs> not yeah. thinking reasonably. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's I, I think that's really fine to limit. The other thing to consider is if you know there's going to be a big meeting, uh, you know, someday, and you don't feel right saying no, like seeing if there's any volunteers who will come, not to do sort of library jobs, but just sort of an extra an extra adult on hand in case something is needed. Well, that, I mean, and that's why um, in this case, you know, I relied on Lynn to come in um, to to just take a look around because it was unusual. I mean, again, I think. A volunteer, maybe I, I feel like the trustees because they have, yeah, you know, skin in the game yeah. and an authority. Well, we would to, be volunteers too. Like yeah. I mean, well, yeah. in that yeah. instance, yeah. you would be, but you would also be like I'm a library trustee. So yeah. if like you had to speak to something mm -hmm. relative to a policy or whatever, you'd be like you know, yeah, in a position to do so as opposed yeah. to like a volunteer. Yeah, you know. I mean, if you had just any volunteer here, you would 
say, this is why you're here. You're here because th there's a large group in here and the two folks up there might not have time. Yeah. So we're, you know, really we're counting on mm -hmm. you to, you know, to make sure that everything is, you know. Yeah. I mean, obviously that's and not that the job for every volunteer, but they would know what they're getting into, right? Just like some yeah. people won't sign up to, you know, move giant trees outside, but others will. It's just uh, every, there's different yeah. volunteers for every job. Yeah. Some people I can think of would actually love the opportunity to tell people, get back in your room. <laughs> you parked in a handicapped spot without a placard. Right? I mean, they would think this is like the plum volunteer Maybe. opportunity. The February <laughs> meeting was actually very, very different than the January mm -hmm. one. Um, yeah, in the I event, the weather, was, in the weather, it was that super cold weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I don't, I think it was a different kind of meeting. I don't mm -hmm. think it was, there was something about it that didn't have the same draw, far away draw. Mm -hmm. And I had counted the chairs that were available, and we had made sure that no additional chairs were accessible. Mm -hmm. And so it was only a matter of taking a quick look and being able to see that there were empty chairs mm -hmm. to know that mm -hmm. things were fine. So it wasn't even an intrusive Uh, you know, they didn't even know that I was checking mm -hmm. on them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of parking, more than half of the senior center parking area was available, which was also another big clue that... But it was clear, it was clear from the phone conversation that I had before the meeting that it was their goal to max out the meeting. Because again, mm -hmm. that's why they were talking about, you know, it, could we have an overflow? Mm -hmm. um, and. So I think if they have their druthers, I mean, if you're organizing a meeting, you want people to come. So they, I think they were hoping that it would be another big, Blowout. yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, for whatever reason that didn't happen, whether the speaker wasn't as interesting, wasn't as well publicized, but it could have been, it could have just as easily been another, you know, and, and now just going forward, if, the, you know, we get a call from those folks, I mean, I, I, these, these are my, this is my frame of reference, that it mm -hmm. could be, it could be like that, yeah. it could be a little less, it could be more. Um, so yeah, I have to take that into account. Yeah. Well, initially, the January one, they did ask people to make a reservation. Second one, they did. Or to sign up. Yeah. And what they didn't do was say, I'm sorry, it's full, you may not attend. Or they didn't turn anyone away from the door. And that was a problem for which we were not really prepared. Mm -hmm. Especially when she said she would send people away and then didn't. Mm -hmm. And th after that meeting, that's when you raised the issue of like the condition of the room as well, mm -hmm. right? And so did anything ever happen with that? Like, did they get charged? And the policy says they'll get charged. Um, I don't remember there actually being a condition The restrooms were... Well, the restroom, right, but the, that would, but you know, there's no way of use. measuring who did that. Who, right, yeah. I mean, the, yeah. on a good day, the restrooms are like, mm. you know, we'd be charging, we'd be collecting some revenue. Yeah. You start with the team. Coins operating things that you have to put the coin in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's long ago, like far away. Do I have enough about that? Well, in that, in regard, <laughs> the only other piece of this that I had talked with you about too was mm -hmm. on custodial mm -hmm. um, care of the room and how does that get absorbed? Um, who's, who is absorbing that cost? Is that and that's what I meant by the condition of the room. Like if we yeah, have to hire yeah, someone to, right. to clean well, it. Well, and I'm worried about the condition of like the carpet yeah. and, and food and liquid. Um, the quilts on the wall. I mean, I'm just looking at these quilts on the wall and thinking there's an event in here and mm -hmm. someone spills their drink, out, you know, on well, one of those just quilts. just fingering them or... Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, this is a public space. It, yeah. It's just, it kind of goes with the territory. If it's if it's too precious to be in a public space, it's, it probably shouldn't be in should a public space. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do want to speak to the custodial part because I did have a couple of conversations. One, uh, because we had we had been talking about, well, if we decided to go that route, 
because we only, you know, based on the way things are now, we have three custodial visits a week. Um, I hope one's on Monday. Huh? <laughs> I hope one's on Monday. Well, no, one is not on Monday. <laughs> okay. so, so, that's, so that's why yeah. this is why mm -hmm. it was in my mind because, you know, the meeting was Saturday. Yeah. We opened on Monday and then we didn't get a custodial cleaning until Tuesday morning. I'm glad you guys have and, your own bathroom. Yeah. Tell me about it. So we, um, so I spoke with, I spoke with the, the, contractor that currently does the janitorial and I just said you know we're not I don't know that we're going to do this but if we were going to do this mm -hmm. if we wanted to charge a fee for a large large meeting where it's you know could be messy and we wanted to pay for just an extra cleaning what would you charge from you know ballpark and yeah. she said $30 and I was like okay My God. Yeah. good information that's <laughs> yeah. that's basically all I need to know I'll let you know if this is yeah. something we want to talk yeah. about further um, and then in the meantime I talked to um Carolyn, the town administrator, and because we had had a conversation, Haley and I had both written to her and said, like, look, we're having so many people through here, and mm -hmm. three custodial visits a week for either of us is not enough. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and she said, I completely agree, because, you know, this, they, town hall comes over here, and they come for meetings, and sometimes they go into the restrooms, mm -hmm. and they go, ugh. Yeah. So, uh, not Good. to make too fine of a point on it, but, but she was like, I totally agree. Yeah. We're going to look at this. And so the last time uh, I spoke with with her about the budget, I just you know brought that up again, and she said, "Well, we're actually looking at the possibility of hiring someone on staff that would work for DPW, not a contractor, but someone that would be yeah. a town employee hmm. that would cover these two buildings and, and perhaps some others, but it, they would be pretty much focused on on these two mm -hmm. buildings." So I was like, "That's great. Because if yeah. that's the case, then we don't really need right. to go down that road of like scheduling, you know, just a la carte." Right cleaning visits. So yeah. if that goes through that would be that would save um, that would that would save us. Is there anything else about custodial? Um, no, I have um, just been thinking about the logistics like who's gonna put out the trash can and who's gonna collect the trash bags and it's su it's supposed to be that I think we need to make it a little more explicit in here and I did I did kind of throw a line in here about a trash can would be provided but I want to make that more clear that it's the responsibility of the person using the room to take the trash bag mm -hmm. with them. Whether they take it home or whether they walk around the outside of the building and put it in the trash can. I'd rather they took it home. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, because our trash can will fill up. I mean, we, we get one trash removal a week and that is always full too. So that's mm -hmm. like another thing that, that we need to address because by the time we get to the middle of the week, it's just like, throw it on top. Mm -hmm. huh. um, so that's no. Uh, like the time that I had the dead owl that flew into the window and I had to put that in a trash bag and throw that on. <laughs> it was below freezing, though, so it was... Oh. Oh. What kind of owl was it? A dead one. <laughs> was it little? Stone dead. No, it was big. Oh, it was wow. a big, heavy owl. Oh, I wonder yeah. what happened to it. It Did flew it into the window. It oh, oh you so, so you saw it, it happen? It, it no, but it was, it was obvious because it was just like on the gravel right below the window. Uh -huh. Mm. And it was stone dead. So you know, and <laughs> somebody came in one day and said, "There's a, there's a dead you know there's a dead owl over there." And I was like, "Uh huh, okay, right." <laughs> um, and I, I think sure. I called animal. I, that's the first thing I did. I called animal control and I said, uh, "There's a dead owl here." I didn't want to look at it. Yeah. Um, Audrey was fascinated. She went on. She was taking pictures of it. Showing the pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was so that the really cold weekend? It, no, this was back in the fall, but it was still oh. cold enough that it wasn't like a concern. Mm -hmm. um, but but you know days were passing, and the animal control people didn't call. I think I even called the police and said, "Oh, because you know, I think the animal control person is also a, a police officer mm -hmm. or something yeah. like that." Yes. Um, and eventually, I just had to, I had to call Gary, and I said, "Gary, I got a dowel. <laughs> I'm throwing it. It's on top of the trash can. I need you to take it away because like you know the trash is not going to be picked up for four days or something. So please take it." Oh. Well, next time you find a dead owl, you can call me because I'll come get the dead owl and I'll look at it Stop and it. then I'll bring it home and just like throw it out back for the wildlife, like okay. so it'll just go back to. I wish I'd known. Yeah. You could also throw it in my backyard, but I don't need to see it first. You just put it in the backyard. I, I'm not throwing it anywhere. I'm gonna you guys can come <laughs> pick it up. I'm not. But, doing that. but what, what, is our, what is our dead bird policy? I don't <laughs> know. Um, can I ask you a question? Um, and I think. Yeah, I guess I'm wondering if if the language at the end around like no legal activities are permitted, I'm just wondering like what if a hate group wants to use the space? 
Um, to me, that would be covered by like Just laws about violence. Um, if they're promote, if it's a group that's promoting violence um, or hate crimes, like then that would be um, that would be covered under the like you can't use this space to do things who, that are illegal. Who, but who registered? I mean, that's the question though. In in the state yeah, of Massachusetts, you get too who slippery. who registers that one group is a is a hate group? I'm just wondering, like, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, who makes that judgment? Like, right. And how do you know? Like, let's you say can't. that I'm going to bring my neo Nazi group here, mm -hmm. but I don't register neo Nazis. Neo Nazi Hadley, moms. Right? Nazi moms of Hadley. I, I, you know, I register my name, my contact name. Right. And I, I right. Just, I, again, that, that's one of those things where, yeah. you know, even, one of the, even the group that was here, mm -hmm. um, you know, the staff were kind of like curious to know what was going on. So they were kind of tuning in because it was broadcast yeah. um, they were kind of watching it and and they were you know kind of like oh my god this is a hate group yeah and i was like i i think i think vaccine misinformation i don't i mean i i'm just you know like it just in a in a time when we see like the rise of like more and more sort of neo-fascist nazi groups i'm just i'm just wondering like what happens if such a group says like we, well, it's our First Amendment right to use this space. Is that I would I would not I would personally would not dispute that. I mean, I, no, I, again, as long as as long as they are not actually breaking a law, um, I don't really see that it's our, our business to to get in the middle of it. Um, well, it's a slippery slope. And it's I a would say if you knew there was going to be backlash and like riots were going to occur outside in protest, then well, I would say Patrick is within his rights to say. No, because it will probably well. That's why that's why I was concerned about the meeting that took place yeah. because, mm -hmm. and that's why I notified the police because not because I was afraid that the people in the room were going to say something or whatever, but I was worried about disorder related to a controversial yeah. issue mm -hmm. where people could then, you know, the second one was in the newspaper. I mean, the second yeah. one had like yeah. a write up in the paper um, where people could then reasonably be expected to come and counter, you know, counter protest right. the meeting. And then you have people yelling at each other or whatever. I mean, that's like a totally imaginable yeah. thing. Um, right. But, it, but at that point, do you, ways, but do, right? you tell, do, you, yeah. do you just say, like, we, you, you're not allowed to have controversial opinions or meetings that might um, incite a, a people to come with an opposite view? I mean, the, people could have come in with the opposite view and, mm -hmm. and disrupted yeah. the meeting. Um, at which point we would have probably had to step in if it was like becoming disorderly and, and again violating the policy of you know patron conduct people were yelling people were disrupting yeah. we would call the police on that basis not based on what they were saying or exactly their views. yeah and I think that's what you can say in the policy <laughs> yeah. is that um, if the situation arises to a level that a staff member feels that the police need to become involved then that group shall be charged whatever the police fee is for um, well, there's, a police. Well, isn't that covered by regular I mean, library yeah, no, there's, policy? There's not a, yeah, yeah no, but there's, anyone, I mean, there's no, there's no, there wouldn't be a fee. They would be either charged or not charged. The police came and just said, you know, beat it or mm -hmm. we're arresting you. That would be between them and the police, not between us. I mean, if someone, something was damaged, I guess that would be part of the charge right. for, you know, for why they were being arrested. Um, but I did want to say that in here somewhere, um, we do allude to, and I wish this print was not so tiny, to the ALA's um, yeah. Bill of it's Rights. In the second which, paragraph. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. in the second paragraph? Yep. Yep. And I did confirm that as a quotation. OK, yeah. So which states that the facility should be made available on an equitable basis, regardless of the beliefs or, or affiliations of individuals or groups requesting its use. Mm -hmm. So again, I think we should be completely agnostic about, I mean, to be quite blunt, I don't want to know. You know, I don't really want to know what people are talking about. I mean, for, for whatever reason, whether it's politics or things that I don't agree with, I just... Or even know, if you yeah, agree I, I agree. It. No, I mean, yeah. we can. Right. We can. No. Only if the behavior... Right, is disruptive. ...is a problem. Either what they are doing in right. here is a problem or what takes place nearby. But this was a this was a comment right. also made by the staff. Like, can't we do something about this? Uh, mm. About the things they were saying, or the fact that they well, were they, being disruptive. The, the, the two things are being the two things are being conflated. That yeah. it's this is a bad yeah. thing that's happening yeah. here. Um, and 
But I, I guess I'm trying to distinguish between controversial opinions or <coughs> opinions that I find reprehensible and groups that are advocating violence or are organizing for violence or organizing, I mean, I. I feel like I'm answering my own question in that illegal activities are not allowed, and so coming in here in order to organize a violent rally or whatever mm -hmm. um, would be covered by that. Um, because that I just don't know, because like, you can't be agnostic about about that. Um, well, but that would be a police matter. It, right, you'd be calling yes. the police. Like, I heard yes. they're planning a riot in there. Right, exactly. Know, burn down town hall. I mean, yes. you'd be calling the police to okay. report that. That's all I wanted to matter. confirm yeah. is that, like, yeah. Yeah. Okay, when it comes to that. I'm just, like, before I came to this meeting, I was, you know, reading something about Charlottesville in 2017, and I was just, like, it's just on my mind. And, yeah. It's and sad. it's, yeah. Book banning. Yeah. Rallies. Sure. Yeah. It yeah. is a crazy world we are living in, and these are, you know, there some, are, yeah. These folks walk among us. But by not limiting, like by <coughs> minimizing our limitations, we're sort of, in some ways, fighting against all of that by saying, you come and use it, even if we disagree personally with you. This, this is a public Right, space. we're not, I mean, that's what, well, yeah. you know, the, the, at one of our department ed meetings, the, you know, the police did a training on these First Amendment auditors that are going around and because they have a right to be there, will walk into a police department or a town hall and just start filming and very clearly the whole point of this is to be a provocateur and mm -hmm. to, to to create um, a scene that mm -hmm. then becomes a oh, look at these people, you know, oh, they must have something to hide. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, I, you, I would rather not engage on that level with, um, with anyone that comes in here looking for that kind of trouble. Are there any other elements of this that anyone would like to discuss? There were a couple of like <clears throat> typographical things that I saw that I can. Yeah, I mean, if you see anything like that, I mean, Lynn had some as well. Mm -hmm. I, I guess my question is really more a matter of: um, is this considered a first second. reading? Is this? Mm -hmm. I mean, is this the second one? Do we need? To, should I take this away and revise it? Include those changes so that everyone can then review it again and we vote on it at the next meeting. And with a revision, do we need two readings, or is it just? Do we just need one to revise something? Anybody I know? think for our policies, and most of them have been revisions, we've yeah. always had two readings. Okay. So I, I don't know. Sure. This was the first reading. So this is yeah. the first reading? We will be back. Um, I will probably distribute a revised version in relatively short order rather than like just before the meeting and would kindly ask you to do a very close reading yeah. of it, um, in addition to the fact that I think I am moving out of my house on March 6th for oh. five weeks. Oh, are you doing like a fun renovation? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Are you going someplace warm? Greenfield. <laughs> <laughs> Greenfield, East Hampton, and Montague. Mm -hmm. All right. Somewhere between all of the those. big tour. Yeah. 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 What are you doing? Essentially, destroying the bathroom and rebuilding it. Mm. Oh. It has been a long process <laughs> to get out. You're lucky that you're able to do it now. I have been trying for three years. Oh, wow. Okay. Anyway, so, so the access to bits, of, even though I can always get in my house, but I can't stay there because I only have one bathroom, mm -hmm. so it's going to be a little bit different. So I will get this to you and it will look different, but this, it's not that the substance is going to change. Yeah, I mean, I think we both have some, some work to do. Can we pass this back and forth a couple of times? Yes, before we said no, that? yeah, yeah okay. no. Yeah. Like, There's absolutely my intention to okay. work with you in Great. before sending it out to everyone else, but. Okay. No, um, no, no, I am not. Yeah, you, I mean, you put a lot of you put anything. a lot of thought into the language on that, so I'd like to just see how that reads, and then absolutely. We'll, oh, add, no, no, no. Add, I add the other salient points that we thought I said that today. earlier yeah. today, but who knows? Maybe other things. Too much going on. 
went by the way. Okay. Would you like to report, sure. sir? So, I, I mean, most of this is self-explanatory. Um, we submitted a 10-year capital plan. There wasn't a lot uh, of note on there, and a lot of it was just guesswork because everything's new in the building. So it, it's really hard to say how quickly things will wear and when we might actually ask for things. But um, rather than have it be a surprise, and you know, I just put things in and, and made my best guess. Patrick? And we, we do that every year, so. Yep. It just occurred to me that I wonder if we should put a concrete replacement placeholder on here. On the capital plan? Mm -hmm. It's already been submitted at this point. I, I think it can, you know, as it seemed like everyone was in agreement that this doesn't need to happen this year, so when it comes oh, up right. again, we'll, but just, just, we'll add it to, to next year. That's fine. That's fine, but it... We know that that's something that's going to probably have to happen. We just don't know exactly when. Yeah. Does everybody know about the concrete? We've, have you we talked talk about, about that last, yeah. last I mean, time? Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, so there's nothing really new about that. Um, the town annual report is due on March 3rd. And Lynn, I don't know, we haven't talked about this yet, but that customarily there, there's a, a piece that I write from the staff side and then the chair. Last year's. Okay. Yep. Please and thank you. Um, draft budget was sent. We had the meeting, as I mentioned, with Linda and uh, Carolyn. That went fine. Um, I, I don't know how they responded. I don't know if, if Carolyn's going to, you know, accept the budget as submitted or if she's going to make, you know, adjustments to it. Did they give any feedback, or they just were like, "Thank you, Patrick"? Next. <laughs> I mean, they didn't say, well, what do you think about this? It wasn't like a negotiation. It was just yeah. like they understood, you know, my points. Right. Um, but I'll, mm -hmm. I mean, I'll know when something is sent back, like here's what town administrator recommends. Yep. Um, until okay. then. But we do, um, I need to follow up on that because I thought I would have had it by now. Um, because we're, we are meeting with the finance committee on Thursday. So it would be good to know what the town administrator recommends. Anybody else wants to be there? Let us know. This is um, a situation where we are asking for more in terms of a percent raise yeah. to the budget than we normally do. That's right. That's why I wondered if they said anything. Yeah. I mean, again, I I, the, I feel like the numbers speak for themselves, and I don't really know what I can say beyond pointing out like the discrepancy of you know same staff more or less. But you know, thirty percent more of this, thirty percent more of that. Whole mm -hmm. new categories of work that we have to do. Um, it it, it kind of speaks for itself. So hopefully, people will be receptive to that on the finance committee, um, because this, as as I've said, this is really the least of what we need to keep going. Because mm -hmm. we're just getting. I personally feel like I'm just getting further and further behind, yeah. just showing up to work um, day over day, because mm -hmm. it's just so so much going on all the time. Uh, youth services. Coordinator position has been posted, closes uh, closes the 24th. We have one application so far, uh, but it's only been out there for about a week. Um, ethics training is, uh, is now, is live. There's a new process for that. I haven't done it yet myself, but if you haven't done it in the last two years, um, you are obligated to go through um, the training for that. Uh, HVAC noise, I don't have anything on that, although I, I did talk to Tom Bakula because I ran into him, um, and I, I suggested that he should check in with the town administrator about that if he's still, because he, he always you know, brings it to me, I don't know, I hear it late at night. So it's kind of always always the same thing. And I just said, well, we you know, kind of pushed it onto DPW's plate because they're the people interacting with the contractor who installed it, but yeah. is now maintaining it. Um, and every time I call Gary, he just says the same thing that it, you know that they're not calling them back. They're not doing this. They're not doing that. Yeah. Well, um, so I explained that to Tom, and I said, you know, if you really are feeling strongly about this, I would call the town administrator and let her know, and maybe she can lean on um, on someone to get a result, so that we can then make an informed decision. But I think that's, that's a great where, answer because I mean that's really what it is. They're the ones who are maintaining the system now, so they're the ones yeah. who would have the answers. I thought that was brilliant. 
Because it's right. It's like the most expedient way. Well, it's the reality too. Yeah. It's not. I mean, it's just that is the reality. I cannot make anyone uh, in another department do anything. I can't make them call right. anymore. They're already calling. Yeah. Um, and I've been asking, you know, for a while now. And oh, and we didn't really talk about this. Uh, the we had a little meeting. Um, just. Allison and Lynn and myself to talk about what's going on with the roof and how to proceed. Uh, and we agreed at that meeting that it would be a good idea to have some independent um, Evaluation. evaluations of the roof. So we got some recommendations. I called some. Some didn't call me back. Some were not, you know, in that particular line of work. But we did get two roofers, two professional roofers from the area to come out and do um, an evaluation. Got up on the roof, fly a drone do whatever. So I only have, as of this meeting, I only got one of the actual written reports back. And I wanted to, before sharing them, and I wanted them to both be here so that everyone could read them. And I don't know if they're going to match up or if they're going to be, um, if they're going to be discrepancies, but I figured we should just wait until they're both here and then talk about what we see and what we think we should do next. And do we need to authorize the cost of that through the construction monies, or that's just it's under the amount that we? So I think one. So one one of the inspections was five hundred, the other was seven fifty, and I believe that that, that is under both of those are under the threshold of yeah. what the trustees had authorized me to go ahead with um, for construction expenses. So the first um, invoice already arrived, and I've just put that in the bills to be Perfect. paid, um, and I'm waiting for the other one. Um, did we find out any um, thing about the lead and whether there's any kind of extension where there what I do heard? know is that there is a clock that is ticking based on the fact that the state is going into another grant round like they're announcing a new grant round that'll be like whatever it is five six years of you know several projects each each year and at some point that money goes away or it gets rolled back into future projects if we haven't you know, claimed it. So it's not a perpetually available um, possibility for us, but I didn't get a clear answer on, on when it goes away. It may just be based on the financial reality um, at any given time. They announced in July, right? Which, which the, the Like the next uh, five, Things that I'm not sure what the timing is, but but yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I should check back in about that and see if there's any additional detail. But I did explain our situation. I did explain that we're kind of caught in this limbo because of the roof, um, and they're of course horrified and sympathetic. But you know, what can you do? It's yeah, not. Okay. I mean, they're, they're not the lead certified. You know, they don't make the judgment. Um, uh, and so there are a couple of other details related to leave that have to be addressed but this is the, obviously the biggest one yeah uh, it's not to say that we couldn't get lead if we didn't have the solar panels but I think it would be we'd be close to the edge and that, that we really would be down yeah, to that was the, whether we collect light bulbs or not yeah. to, to get us over the line yeah which is yeah yeah <clears throat> and I, I think that's more or less uh, it's more or less Patrick, could you say something about the Library of Things, which I'm very excited to hear about? <laughs> yeah, I, this has got the most verbiage here, but the, it's actually, um, at this point, it's very embryonic because we, uh, Audris, before she left her position, applied for a, um, a cultural council grant. Mm -hmm. And we got $300, which is not a lot to work with, um, but it, it, it kind of, I think, is going to set us in motion in terms of thinking about this project mm -hmm. but the really the limiting factor for us i mean this would be great because we, we could accept donations of, mm -hmm. of yep. many different things we could tell you know people what kinds of categories of things we'd like to collect the issue is we don't have the space mm -hmm. right uh, i was wondering and, where it was going to go yeah, yeah I'm, I'm wondering mm -hmm. so i don't know i'm not exactly sure how that's gonna i don't know how that's gonna play out mm -hmm. uh, because we really are short on space as it is and there's just not a, um, yeah, and this, this would need a fair amount of 
like <laughs> right. Yeah. So I think it makes awkward it, it, space. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to make us think about like the parameters for what kinds of things we're going to do. Like they're just we're not going to be loaning out mm -hmm. kayaks and right. giant things. We're going to be um, like the slide projector. I don't know if you guys remember. I have not had time to sit down and actually just learn how this thing works. I don't think it's that complicated. But put the, the little slide and film scanner that we got. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, it's in my office. But that would be a perfect thing for a library of things where you can just take it home and mm -hmm. with some instructions and, um, and use it. And it doesn't take a lot of room. Um, so I think gadgets like that, smaller gadgets for, um, would be good. Um, but there's their whole, you know, their whole category. So we, I, we need just to just spend some time thinking mm -hmm. about it because there could be things that, you know, sort of ingenious ways to do this because do gardening tools really need to be in the library? Maybe there's a way of having like some sort of a shed. shed. With, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, although I know the planning board doesn't like sheds. Mm -hmm. So maybe. There's this is an article on the front page of the Gazette today about Lily, Forbes, and Amherst have gotten some grant from someplace mm -hmm. for the induction mm -hmm. single burner, mm -hmm. whatever, which yep. is in their library of mm -hmm. things. Yep. Which I thought was. Did you see Turner's Falls has a, a traveling Smithsonian? Yeah, we applied for that, but we didn't get it. Oh, but but you know, yeah, Turner's is a deserving community. I think they'll mm -hmm. do, do great with it. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, we did have a group of people that did that. It was uh, mm -hmm. Alan. Alan wrote that with folks from the his, which was I don't remember who was. Was on it the that. Porter Phelps, maybe? Maybe it was yeah it was a real nice group effort. There were like yeah. a bunch of um, different parties involved, but yeah. but of course we didn't it. So that would have been in this room. I guess that was the plan that it would have been in here. I thought you were going to say when you said Turner's Falls Library, I was there at some point when they had like a big display of their seed library, which I saw and was like that would be perfect for Hadley. And also seeds don't take up a lot of space, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so that could be a starting place. <laughs> yeah, that would be a good one. Friends, uh, I sent you all uh, notes. Um, there's a meeting tomorrow night, and um, they have uh, two new um, volunteers. Is it tomorrow night? I thought they moved it to. Did we? Did we not change it back to Tuesdays? Maybe I missed the memo. <laughs> I'll have to look. <laughs> it's not tomorrow night. I thought it was tomorrow night. But okay, maybe it is. That we switched. Uh, but uh, two new volunteers, uh, uh, let's see, Suzanne Heron, her name's not Heron, Heron. Um, I saw that, I was like, oh, that's too bad for that. <laughs> so I'm glad uh, she comes from uh, either Lee or, is it Lee or Lennox? Sandusfield, maybe? And she goes I know to, the page, she's a library patron and I know her but I want to say she comes from somewhere like Shelburne Falls or something. Like that's what her library. Is. I feel like that's what her. That's oh, really? she's, she's. But I don't. I don't know. Uh, to be but honest. she comes and volunteers while she's doing things in the area, and uh, Wanda Cook also is helping with the room. The and uh, you saw all the things that uh, the um, that the friends donate to. Yeah. Yeah. Stay tuned. Okay, I just have three quick things. Patrick, did we ever get the documents we asked for from the Western Mass Community Foundation? Oh, when they came to visit? Yes. But Alan was so insistent. I remember that we got the, the document. We got a document that was signed. That was one of yeah. the things that he was concerned with. We did get that. Okay. Uh, All right. I just, I was organizing all of my old library stuff and I saw that and was reminded and I didn't remember. Um, Did I send this? I sent you the put the I statements. Sent the statements. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Right, yes, but there had been, Alan had, we had that sort of memo of understanding mm -hmm. that may not even have had a date on it and certainly did not have a signature on it. I think that was addressed. Okay, that's fine. I just wanted to check. Um, two other things real quick. We have a 
tell it'll be Vanna. <laughs> well, it doesn't say exactly the same stuff oh, that, <laughs> that is on the wall. Um, but that will get sent to the paper. And so that's the press release? Yes, the press right. release. Yes. And it speaks to a little bit more than the recognition thing does in terms of personal attributes. And I shared it with the folks from whom I got the quilts, and they were both very happy with it. So that was a good thing. The one last thing I would like to mention is Patrick's contract is up in June. And given that we are all familiar with it, having gone through the director review process and recognizing that a lot of things has changed since his job description was written, I asked him a while ago if he would take a stab at updating it and have that ready by April 1st or thereabouts. Um, and once we have gone through that process, I think I would like to suggest that we sort of codify for ourselves or at least develop a process for conducting the review mm -hmm. so it is, it takes place Early. soon after the end of the year that's being evaluated. But that's just a general plan. I don't have anything specific in mind. And if anyone would like to suggest something, I would be delighted to hear what they had to say. Does anybody else have anything else? Has anyone pulled papers yet? Did that you know? Oh. No? I have But if you know anybody who What's might be interested. Do you know what the deadline is? I'm sorry? The deadline? March. I don't remember. I know it was in the town last, like the, yeah. you know, when they sent that around. I don't recall exactly what the deadline We do hopefully have a, uh, a list of all of the, the uh, positions that are open all, th all throughout the town on the uh, circulation desk because they, they asked us to put it out for people to see. Nice. A couple of people oh, have asked good. questions about it's it. Good. Did you nobody. highlight the library trust? I, I didn't. It's kind of like confusing because it just, it says essentially who's in the position now, but it doesn't say, mm -hmm. um, like, well, Alan's not in the position, so it doesn't say that that one's vacant. So mm -hmm. it's, it's actually confusing for mm -hmm. people because they think that um, they either interpret it as that those people are running mm -hmm. or uh -huh. Because yeah, they see a name not. next to it. They don't just say see that it's like up, up for election. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it seems to raise more questions than mm -hmm. questions and answers. But. It doesn't just say vacancies. Yeah, just write on it. She just. <laughs> yeah. I could do that. Next, a motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Second.